Hey, 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 welcome guys to another video in this channel. Notice anything new? Well, uh, there's a new camera. I was able to uh, improve our old camera, uh, which it, I'm, I'm quite amazed. This was the old camera that I was using. It was a uh, Canon T3. I bought it like in 2012, I think. And um, the new one is smaller and better. So, you know, technology improving all the time, right? Uh, it has this autofocus thing, so you're going to have to... Uh, forgive me, I'm still setting it up, so we might get some of those uh, effects. Uh, but yeah, let's go. Let's go to our class today. And today we're going to be working on something really, really interesting that actually has to do a little bit with the cameras, which is, uh, well, not that much. It's it's about lights more than more than cameras. So uh, someone in the comments, I think it was yesterday or a couple of days ago, they asked for something called photometric lights. And photometric lights are lights that exist in the real world and which prof uh, and this profiles or this information the way they're they're built and the way they're set up it's it's online so like light creators or light uh, manufacturers such as uh, Philips Osram um, I don't know LG like all of those guys that that create the light bulbs some of them share for free the IES profiles of their lights. You can also find a lot of like packs like this one that you can uh, buy. Some of them are free. Some of them are cool. Uh, quick little um, like. Um, Tip for everyone out there, if you're using Maya, and even if you're not using Maya, if you go to the Autodesk Arnold documentation, that's why reading that human documentation is so important, you're going to find this one right here. So it's this free pack of example IES lights. And what they do or what these things are, they're just lights, like normal lights that you would find, but with specific shapes and, and forms and, and elements that would be pretty much impossible to get using a traditional like rectangular light or anything. So the way to use them is super, super, super simple. Uh, but I want to create and uh, do the little scene that you're seeing there on the on the thumbnail. <coughs> oh my god! Um, so I'm out of COVID now, but you know, well, technically or supposedly I'm out of COVID, but you know, you you remain like a. Uh, contagious for a couple of whiles. Like I don't have any more symptoms. I'm feeling way, way better. Unfortunately, my wife and our baby caught it. So they have very mild symptoms, but it's uh, uncomfortable. And uh, of course, uh, a little bit annoying. So uh, we're going to do a quick tileable texture here. And uh, one important thing, this is this is really, really, really important, is that the scale of the lights usually comes in proper like world scale. So if you're working with this, or if you're working with, with lights, you should be modeling things at a world scale. However, I did do a test before uh, recording this one and the lights were not at real world scale. So let me show you here. This is just a small uh, sized uh, plane and let's assign a new material. So I'm going to go into Arnold AI standard surface and let's go here and let's go to the hypershade. I downloaded a, a texture. Uh, it's this one AI standard two. I downloaded a texture from our trusty uh, site Polyhaven which is this one right here, uh, white plaster. So I downloaded the ambient occlusion of this metallic, diffuse and normal map. Uh, you you guys know the drill, super, super easy. So let me just navigate real quickly to our source images folder. And if we go here, wall texture, we can grab all these three guys, just drag and drop them right here and uh, start working with them. So that's the diffuse. Diffuse goes into the base color. That's the um, ambient reclusion roughness um, metallic, which in this case, we're going to be using this channels right here. But very important, remember, we need to make this a raw because we only want like black and white colors. So uh, ambient occlusion, we don't have uh, roughness. We do have. So the specular roughness, there we go. And metallic, we do have. So that's it. Uh, we can combine or we could combine the ambient occlusion, but I'm just going to keep it simple right now. And finally, I'm going to create a AI normal map and input this out color into the input of the normal map and then the out value into the normal camera. This one, uh, it's raw, it's set to raw, so it should be it should be fine. So yeah, if we press number six, we got that nice like wall over there. So it's super simple. Uh, it's the most simple stuff and actually like you, you really don't need me to explain it, but I thought it was gonna be a, a cool short video. I'm actually working, um, I think I can kind of spoil it right now because we're getting close to release. I'm working on the next course and uh, I will be showing you a little bit of a teaser in the next couple of days, uh, but that's why I'm, I'm doing this short video because I need to finish recording some of the things that are still uh, missing. So this is it. You just create this thing called the AI photometric light, which again, you can find here, Arnold lights, AI photometric light. And it's just a matter of going into the inputs and loading in the ES profile. You can see here in my source images, I extracted the files that I just show you from the Arnold documentation and we got access to all of the this guy. So I really like, for instance, number six right here. And uh, if I uh, go into Arnold and render, we should get our nice render. 
Where's my render? There we go. So the only problem, as I've mentioned, is the fact that um, it's it's not like properly set up for the for the proper like scale that we need. So I'm actually gonna go here and I'm gonna add a, a sky dome light so that we can see a little bit more. And let's add uh, a file, of course. And we have our trusty urban courtyard. There we go. Which is an overcast day, so we should have a little bit more light. And if we render. There we go. So that's the that's the wall. But again, we are not seeing any of the of the volumetric light that we want, right? So I'm gonna go into this guy right here and uh, decrease the exposure. Let's say like minus three, so that when we render, it's really really dark. And now we can start seeing a little bit more of the of the element right there. And of course, you're gonna go into the photometric light and you're gonna change the intensity. In this case, we don't have expo. Oh, we do have exposure. There we go. So we do have exposure. I thought we didn't have exposure. I didn't see it. There we go. So now if we say five, as you can see there, that's gonna give us a really, really nice shape. So the only thing that I need to warn you about this lights is they're expensive. They're way more expensive than having just like a rectangular light. So they will give you a very nice, as you can see, very nice clean render, uh, but they're expensive. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you can change the temperature, which is again, really, really cool. So we can go like really, really like, uh, uh, what's the word really warm or really really uh, cold depending on what you want these are usually used for architectural visualization so if you're planning a project like a house or like an apartment complex or something you can even say yeah we're going to be using these lights to get this specific effect because i want this specific like light pattern on, on, on this specific wall right so you can go all the way there and create something really really cool and of course as with any light here inside of maya you can use as many of them as you want so Let's change and let's explore some of this, like let's say 23 and this one, let's use like 13 and let's see how they look. So let's hit play. And there you go. So each of them will give you a slightly different result. Some of them will have like a wider cone, longer shots, a couple of like different uh, like movements here on the, on the elements and, and they create this very, very nice effect. Now, uh, the IES, IES light has this little arrow and that arrow is really important. Usually, the way I've seen them used is like this, like you, they're usually gonna be parallel to the area that you wanna uh, illuminate because if we were to grab like this guy right here and point it towards the, uh, towards the, the wall, what's gonna happen is that we're gonna get this sort of thing, okay? So if that's what you wanna get, fine. I mean, it, it, looks, it looks quite nice as well. You're gonna get an, an interesting result, um, but usually, usually, you're gonna use them uh, like on, on the side, see? So, so this is what the ES, IES lights do. They, they create different intensities at different like intervals of the, of the illumination of the thing. Again, this could be like a very nice spotlight. So feel free to explore and, and play around, but the, the normal use that I've seen them is this sort of like horizontal thing. Now, uh, I wanna show you another cool thing, which is uh, normally these guys come with like a little uh, lamp and it's usually made out of glass. So how can we do that very quickly? And it's actually quite, quite simple. I'm just gonna grab a sphere here. Let's delete half of the sphere and then the other half of the sphere. Let's delete those little guys right there. And remember glass refracts light, so we need to have thickness. So I'm gonna extrude this thing, give it a little bit of extrusion there. And then I'm gonna grab uh, all of this like outer edges because you're usually not gonna have like a super sharp glass. They're usually like beveled. So two fractions and a small segment, there we go. And that's it, we have this nice little shape. I'm gonna right click and assign an existing material. I'm gonna assign this AI standard surface one, which is a glass material that I created. Uh, and it's actually a preset, I'm gonna show it to you uh, right now. So let's make this a little bit bigger. Let's get this there. And let's duplicate this and duplicate it over here. Cool. So the shader is super, super easy. You're just gonna go here into presets and there's this one called frosted glass and that's exactly what I, what I did there. So now if we take a look at the render, you're gonna see that the light is actually being cut out by the elements. Now, you guys remember if you've seen some of our other videos that for light to really and nicely propagate, uh, one of the things that we need to do, let's first delete history just in case, is go here into the options and in the Arnold render, sometimes we need to increase the rate depth on the diffuse and on the specular. I'm gonna do like 16 transmission, just to have enough bounces here to be able to see it through the glass. So you can see some of them, some of the lights are, are giving me the effect that I want because they're like brighter on the on the origin than some of the others. Like this one is not as, uh, as bright on the origin. We can of course change that. If we go here and we increase the exposure, I don't know, to 10 or something, which will be quite a big change. Now you can see how the frosted glass starts uh, generating its, its own effect. So yeah, that's it guys, quick little demo here. Just another extra tool for your uh, toolbox, for your 3D toolbox. And uh, hopefully you guys um, 
like this uh, little thing right here, I'm gonna probably like lower the exposure to like a minus one. So now nah, minus one is way too too little. So let's do minus two. There we go. And let's get ourselves a nice like shot for our, our render. There we go, something like that, just so that we can we can fully appreciate the the IES uh, lights going or doing their job. So yeah, that's it, guys. Hopefully you again like this video. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. And uh, we're going to be coming into the channel with very big news very, very soon. So hopefully you guys are uh, already subscribed and with a little bell icon so that you know exactly what we're going to be um, like publishing. One more thing. This is, I think this is the last day. Today it should be February the 3rd. So if, uh, if you have not subscribed to our newsletter, make sure to go down here in the description because I do believe that we still have a couple of free courses to give away. So uh, go down here, check it out, and maybe you will be um, able to snag one of those free uh, stylized character courses. And yeah, guys, that's it. Thank you very much for uh, your time. Thank you very much for your attention. And I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.